To follow along this video, you should turn on the Note Wrangler add-on. Go to Edit, Preference, then in the add-on tab, search for Note and the Note Wrangler will show up. I already turned it on as you can see. Once turned on, click the button in the bottom left corner and choose Save Current State. The Note Wrangler add-on will add a bunch of useful hotkey to the Note Editor. Ok, let's begin. First, we need to set up a scene to preview our shaders properly. This default cube won't do. Select the cube, hit Ctrl 3 to subdivide it 3 levels. The cube is now a sphere. Hit G, X to bring it aside along the X axis. Let's add a few more objects to the scene. Hit Shift A, go to Mesh, and then Torus. Tweak the torus setting to our liking. Shift A again, this time add a monkey. G, X, and bring it to the right. Ctrl 2 to subdivide it two levels. Now select all the three objects, with the sphere being the last selected. This makes it the active object. You can tell by the different color highlight. Hit Ctrl L and choose Material. This command will assign the material of the sphere to the other two objects. Now all the three objects use the same material. Now hit W and choose Shade Smooth. Time to bring up our shader editor. Click near the top right corner of the viewport and drag to the left to split the screen vertically. On the bigger side, click on the top left icon and choose Shader Editor. Place your mouse cursor on the 3D viewport, hold down Z and bring the mouse down, and then release Z. The viewport is now switched to the look development mode. Use the middle mouse button to drag the top bar to the left. Click on this icon to get rid of the navigation icons down below. Now our viewport is slightly cleaner. Click on the drop down menu here to tweak our look depth screen. Here you can change the HDR environment as well as rotate it. Our shader is just a simple white at the moment so we're not gonna see much difference. We will come back to this later once we have a different material. Ok, let's take a look at the shader editor. This editor shows the material setup for the active material of the active object. Go to the Material tab, we can see that the sphere, which is the active object, has one material, so this material is the active one. However, if we have multiple materials here, the shader editor will show the nodes of the selected material. The principal shader is very flexible and can serve most of your daily need. However, if you want to get good with complex materials, you need to learn how to mix shaders. So let's delete the principal shader. Select it and hit X to delete. This leaves us with the material output node. Let's create the two most basic shaders, the diffuse shader and the glossy shader. Hit Shift A to bring up the add menu, go to shader and then choose diffuse. Place it here. Control shift click on the diffuse shader to connect it to the output. By the way, this hotkey belongs to the Node Wrangler add-on. If you don't turn it on, you will have to manually connect the nodes instead. Now take a look at the viewport. You can see that the diffuse shader is just a simple rough surface. No glossiness whatsoever. The roughness of the diffuse shader does not do anything with the current render engine, which is EV, but with the Cycles engine it will slightly increase the roughness of the surface. Ok, hit Shift A again. This time create a glossy shader. Control Shift click the glossy shader to connect it to the output. The objects now become metal. We can change the roughness value of the glossy shader to make the objects more or less glossy. One will give us something similar to a diffuse shader, while zero will give us a perfect mirror surface. 
But what about plastic? Plastic is a glossy surface that is not metal. This is where the mixed shader node comes to the rescue. Hit Shift A and this time add a mixed shader node and place it onto the connection here. Then connect the diffuse shader to the first slot. This will push the glossy to the second slot. Or you can use a hotkey of the Node Wrangler add-on, hold down Alt and then right click on one of the two shaders and connect it to the other. This will automatically create a mixed node and mix the two shaders and output the result. You can now change the factor value of the mixed node to determine how the shaders are mixed. One gives us 100% of the second slot, while zero gives us 100% of the first slot. And 0 0.5 will give us a 50-50 mixture of the two shaders. Let's change the color of the diffuse to red and set the factor to something lower, about 0 0.1, and reduce the roughness of the glossy shader to 0 0.1 as well. Now we have a nice plastic material. Let's change the background to see how the material works under different light conditions. Okay, this plastic looks nice and all, but uh, it is not entirely correct. There are two big errors in this plastic. One, plastic does allow some light to travel through, and this feature is called subsurface scattering, and it is missing in our material. The second error is that real-world glossy materials don't work like this. The roughness as well as the specularity actually depends on the angle at which we view the surface. If you look perpendicular to the surface, the specularity should be lower and the roughness should be higher. And if you look at a tilt angle, the, the specularity should be higher and the roughness should be lower. This phenomenon is called Fresnel effect. And uh, this material does not have any Fresnel effect, which is not correct. We're going to deal with the subsurface scattering business in another video. For now, let's just focus on making the Fresnel effect. Okay. Now, take a look at the nodes. You can see that there is an input slot next to the, uh, the factor slider and next to the roughness here. This means that we can put a black and white texture into these slots to drive the value instead of setting a constant directly in the node. As for the black and white texture, black represents 0, white represents 1, and gray is something in between 0 and 1. If we put a black and white texture into the factor here, the white area will make the surface more reflective and the black area will make it less reflective and if we put the same texture into the roughness the white will make it absolutely rough and the black will make it absolutely glossy like a mirror okay shift a and go to input and choose fresnel place it here control shift click on the fresnel to preview it you can see that the Fresnel node gives us a black and white gradient, a darker value at a perpendicular angle, and as the viewing angle tilts, the value gets brighter. We can change the index of refraction depends on what kind of material we are creating. Now this is called the index of refraction, but uh, we can use it for reflection as well. For plastic, the IOR is 1.46. You can look up this value online for whatever material you are creating. Now we can connect the Fresnel to the factor of the mix node. And uh, it is kind of hard to see, but the side area is now slightly more reflective than the center area. The roughness, however, is a different story. The side should have a lower value, but the Fresnel is giving us a higher value instead. So we need to invert this Fresnel before we can use it to control the roughness. Shift A again, 
go to color and this time choose invert place it here now connect the Fresnel to the invert node and connect the invert node to the roughness of the glossy shader now our objects become very rough but uh, if you look at the side you can see a glossy line around the objects this is because the output of the Fresnel range from 0 to 1 so the roughness range from absolute mirror to absolute rough and we don't actually want that we want the highest roughness to be still somewhat lower so shift A and go to converter and then choose math place it onto the connection between the invert node and the glossy node the math node performs a single math operation right now it is performing an add operation which adds 0 0.5 to whatever value being pumped into this slot the output is now in the range of 0 0.5 to uh, 1.5 which is not what we want so we're gonna change the math operation to multiply now it will multiply 0 0.5 to the inverted Fresnel meaning 0 remains as 0 0 0.5 becomes 0 0.25 and 1 becomes 0 0.5 and so on as a result we get a gradient range from 0 to 0 0.5 so let's multiply with 0 0.25 instead so the maximum roughness will be 0 0.25 now we have a nice plastic material almost physically correct okay let's add a floor and assign the same plastic material to it so that we can clearly see what is going on now you can see that the floor is not reflecting the objects this is because screen space reflection is not turned on just yet so we need to go to the render tab and scroll down a little bit to find screen space reflection and turn it on now you can see the objects are reflecting in the floor however this is screen space reflection meaning that it only reflects what is visible in the camera so for example the bottom of the monkey from this angle is not visible in the camera so it is not reflected on the floor so this is a limitation of EV and uh, in order to have true reflection we need to uh, ray trace it which is the job of the cycles engine now if you look from the top down like so you can see that the reflection is very blurry but if we are to see from this angle the reflection becomes much sharper so that's it for this uh, tutorial. This is how you build a custom material using the shader editor. This is some basic knowledge that will be very useful in the future. In fact, all the material tutorials that I will be releasing in the future will deal with a Fresnel node at some point. Okay, I'll see you later.